we have really great weather for this Wednesday walkabout, we Stuart. It's just beautiful out and a great opportunity not only for a walkabout but also to get some things done here at Hill Cottage. So I think we showed you last Sunday that the patio has basically been created and now we just need to circumscribe it with all sorts of fun green stuff and that is in process. What is also in process right now is the window box that is being built for right underneath my bathroom window. And I cannot wait, we'll be able to get that in place and I'll be able to fill it long before probably the rest of the landscape gets done. Now the most impressive, I think most dramatic change that we're working on right now is the porch. I've got guys here today um, and they are, they're doing lots of things. Now number one, this was kind of a, this was something that had been suggested and this is just the first in a multi-step process. So we removed as much of the red paint with a pressure washer as we possibly could. We only got to a certain point before you may recall there were some additional sections, some blobs right here that remained red and tough. So what we did was they took a drill and they attached rot a rotary sand sanding device, sandpaper or something, and they took off the rest of that. Then they washed it down, they exposed some of these cracks that were here, and we're going to address those today. Then they're gonna come back in here and they're going to apply a very specific color that matches everything else of a top coat that will cover the porch, cover these steps, cover the new sidewalk. Where these guys are all okay guys. Where they're patching the cracks in the wall on the sides of the steps. And ultimately, as some of you suggested, hopefully down the line, I'll probably have a wrought iron railing along here so that people can hold on to it as they come and go. But they're fixing these cracks before we come down and we do the top coat. And also, we're waiting for, I guess, timing on that with the weather and stuff, aren't we? Yeah, to see if we can apply it. We're going to do some samples of the color of it and we'll be able to look at them and drive. And then, and this was something I did not know, but was a key to making it look really, really good. And that was they, when they wetted this down, they told me that this is what it will look like. Because obviously there's a distinction between that which is wet and that which is not wet. I should say wet and dry. And I was looking at this thinking, oh, we're gonna have a problem with the color because it's going to be too light. But once they put a sealer on it, it will all look deep and rich and very harmonious from one space to the next. Now, once that coating gets down, it will have to cure and it will have to dry. And that's when I am gonna go crazy because I'll be able to stage my pots on there. I'll be able to do some styling. I'll be able to do the fun part once all of this kind of tedious work has been done by the, the experts. Now, something else is fun that I wanna show you. So speaking of pots and large containers, this is my little inventory, my nursery of primarily boxwood. And this is what I'm going to be staging in and around here, in and around the new patio. Some may go in the ground, some may go in the back, but nevertheless, I've got them here so that as I am starting to stage things, I'll be able to pick and choose amongst them. I think this one that has been limbed up and isn't in the traditional topiary globular form, I think this one may go at the corner of the cottage on the east side. So I'm thinking through that. I'm looking at those that are symmetrical to flank different points on the porch and in the landscape that will be symmetrical. And that will kind of dictate what I put where. And then over here, I don't know if you can see, but over here, right in front of this other rectangular pot with a dead boxwood in it. There are two rectangular pots that I think in the Sunday segment, I was showing you that I would probably put along here 
to serve as kind of a, of a wall, of a planter wall here, so nobody falls into this mound. Or as I love this expression, as my, my bestie Deborah said, my boxwood village, <laughs> my little boxwood <laughs> village over had here. A boxwood village, I, right? Yeah, and I think everyone needs a boxwood yeah, it's village. Probably a good idea. And you can see that some of the residents are missing, and those residents don't get to be added until all the concrete <laughs> is done, and then along the sidewalk, along the path that goes down to the public sidewalk, my walkway. There will be um, there will be a brick runner that will go on both sides, a brick runner on both sides. So the whole thing, from porch all the way down to the street, will be tied together. It will all look great. It will all look fresh, and more importantly, it will all be stable, foot sure, and just a little bit more solid for the future. And then I have to point out, because I've really missed them, they've been hiding over there. Stuart, can you see some of our, our little blue point junipers where we My shopped our Christmas garden? Trees. Now, one plant that I do miss from the old house is that one large, bald, standard, topiary of a blue point juniper that had just volunteered in my garden and I think that is going to be my replacement. Somewhere I will plant one of those little darlings and it will grow into a big boy and I will have a large a large round ball on stem blue point juniper. I wonder, oh go ahead, no that's cool, keep going, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> well did you have a thought? Well, I, wonder, I wondered if anyone had noticed what was going on in this frame of video that was already different. Oh, that was already different. Yeah. Yes. Well, okay. Well, this, okay. well, this is a good point. Let's take a break and then I'll come back and explain all of that. <laughs> step by step, my vision is coming together and my vision did not include the tiny little brass lanterns that were hanging here. I had these installed yesterday, these English carriage lights. I love the way they look. Stuart, we need to kind of We'll get, get a we'll wide shot. Full yeah. view, yeah, of them, uh, and, and where you can kind of see what they look like in full profile. But I think they look wonderful, as does my new mailbox. I'll put links to all of these things. I bought them online, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of flaking, or I don't know what it's called, but in these that give it this kind of old carriage look. Now, I have ordered some of the bulbs that simulate a glass fire, kind of a glass, oh, what, glass flame? Glass, oh, yeah. Gas flame behind this glass, <laughs> and it should really look old fashioned. So, hopefully, they will do what I want and give me the look that I want within these carriage lights. Now, a number of you had also mentioned, but then it doesn't match that carriage light up there. Well, there is a matching hanging fixture to this that I have already ordered. And as soon as I get it, it will replace the brass one up there and that brass one will go and live someplace else. Because I do think it's adorable. It is nice. But, but I want everything to harmonize together. Do you agree, Stuart? Yes, I do. Are you in agreement? <laughs> okay. One other thing that I'm going to do that I have yet, that I have, have yet, I have yet to do for a couple of different reasons. One. I think I could really dress up this door and add a little bit more jewelry if I put a gra brass pin yeah. plate along the bottom. Because quite often, these old doors, you need to give it a little extra nudge with your boot or something to open it. And I think I might put a brass kick plate on the bottom. As I'm still thinking about and considering replacing the door, just because I like, even though I like this round window, I like so I'm still thinking through that, but it's not prohibitively expensive to put a brass kick plate across the bottom. And it goes without saying that there is just residue everywhere and dust on everything up here because of all of the work that we've been doing. And I will have all of the windows cleaned and have all of that taken care of once the work is finished. Now, if this was an addition, a subtraction, were the two shutters, one shutter on this side and one shutter on the other side. And there's a little bit of residue I'll have to wash off 
from from the dust and what was behind it, but it is barely detectable once you stand at a distance and I'll do that. And I think I think that I was able to fit fit these carriage lights on. They would have been an impediment to probably it would it, it would there wouldn't have been enough gap, enough clearance, enough negative space between the two. So I did that. Another thing that some of you really um, eagle-eyed viewers will tell me <laughs> is that there is a gap between the plank or, or the box of this carriage light and the inset of where the electrical is does. And that would be a prime opportunity for mud daubers, for insects, for things like that. So yes, we will seal that <laughs> to ensure that that doesn't happen, but that's one of those fine points that will be addressed down the line. And I do love the way it looks without the shutters. And even though when I look at it, I think, look, maybe it looks just a tad bare, especially now since there's no furniture on the porch or anything. Then how we're going to address that, Stuart, is by adding another piece of jewelry. <laughs> so I've ordered a brass and bra a, a wrought iron and brass plaque that will go right here that says um, 1930, which is when the house was built, Hill Cottage on it. And it will hang right here and it will echo the brass and the black appointments that I already have here. And I think it will look really, really wonderful. I haven't decided still if I'm going to do any kind of brass wash on this. Maybe not. It may be that between the new light bulbs and this additional, um, this additional pendant that I have on the house, that might be sufficient. So I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to start a little bit conservatively because one of my things is I don't I don't want everything to get a little too cluttered. Now one of you very very understandingly with, uh, with I think the wiki faced emoji said I don't know Linda if you can keep it from getting cluttered because you like plants so much. You have so <laughs> many that you like. That was after our visit to the greenhouse Truth. which was in which was in the last <laughs> Sunday show. I think I heard you say to somebody you're going to be have to give some away. Right? I know I'm going to have to give I'm going to have to give some away probably Hopefully my neighbors will be happy to adopt adopt some of them. Um, okay, here here's something else. We cannot forget. Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Okay, we need a drum roll or something, gentlemen, right here, because on not this next Sunday, but the following Sunday, April second, the day after Stewart's birthday, oh, yeah. following the Sunday show. We're going to watch it all together. It's going to be a premiere. All of us can watch it together. And then I'm going to do an uh, LV Live. I'm going to talk with you guys live. I will answer your questions about how I feel about the move, about how I feel about leaving the fairy tale house. Um, just whatever questions I can answer. And I think it'll be fun. That's I haven't done idea. that in a long time. And I think it's a uh, pastime for us to do that. So mark your calendars. We will be posting it on Instagram and a number of different places. As a reminder, we'll put it in the community tab. Um, so by all means, we want you to, to join all of us then and we will answer some of your questions. I still, I loved all of your responses about what to put over where the valve box is for the sprinkler. And I, I am definitely le leaning towards a bird bath. Um, I think the most popular choices for the opposite side were just a backless bench or perhaps an urn. And I've got an urn that might, that might look nice there. But this side really has yet to completely take Hold on, tell them what off. side you were talking about because okay, the camera this was is the easy okay, side. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Because cool. some of you were asking, <laughs> someone had a bet with their husband. Uh -oh. and, and they were a bet as to which side faced the corner. Well, the corner, the front of my house, right, faces south and this faces east. And all of the guys, as, we, as they were working this morning and as I was out here, Kind of looking things over we were enjoying all of the kiddos walking to school it was just beyond charming two of the, the little guys were walking so slowly <laughs> i wondered if they would I feel ever, that. Make it, <laughs> ever make it on time um, okay something else i want to give you an update on 
update on. I don't know if we can get all the way down there. I pointed out this magnolia that's been here before. And this is, let's see, what variety is it? It is uh, magnolia ants and magnolia. And it had some blooms on it that have already pretty much passed, but it's got new ones coming out. So I had no idea that it would continue to bloom so long. And what I'm starting to look for everywhere now is not just the blossoms, but some kind of hint that the foliage is starting to erupt to. So that's very fun. This one, someone I think commented that people do not like to be transplanted, but this gal is going to be transplanted nevertheless, and I think we can do it safely by getting a large enough root ball. So we're going to be doing that. Something else we're going to be doing as I begin to prepare the soil for this boatload of southern living on azaleas, all of these plants that are coming in, is and before we do the soil prep, I'm going to have a soil test done to see exactly what the status is uh, from a pH standpoint of, of my garden bed areas, because that's important to know before I start putting things that love acidic conditions or things that like alkaline conditions. So we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that. Now over this way, so I might give yourself a wide shot. Um, on my inspiration board in my office, which I'm going to be showing you on Sunday. Lots of work has come down in my office and it's looking pretty good. I have some inspiration images and tear sheets of how I kind of envision staging this to a certain point. It's kind of a plant terrace since it's the door to nowhere. The tulips are, they, boy, they're slow probably because I planted them later. But the tulips are really, not only are some of them, oh, about two, three inches tall, but there are a number of them that are just starting to erupt. These must be late blooming ones. I'm gonna, this is gonna be interesting to see how these bulbs in a pot that were planted very late perform. And I've already been in touch with Color Blends, the people at Color Blends do it for next fall when we'll be planting whatever my palette is of tulips for, for fall and I'll of course share that with you. But I come over here Stuart because why? Because I want to show you how beautiful my snowball, I should say our snowball by yes, you should. is. Because look, look at those blooms. Isn't it just spectacular? And it's got all this beautiful kind of, it starts out green, but it will turn kind of a gray green canopy on it. And after it blooms and after it gets a little bit more established, I'll remove some of the twiginess in here to give it that limbed up form that I really, really like. But the fact that it's going to bloom in the first year is just balm for my soul. <laughs> and should be for yours too, Stuart. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I think, think I'm going to need to put up a picture of what, like, the people that don't know, even for the people that do, oh, just yeah, to remind mean, them of oh, where yes, it's headed. Of how spectacular <laughs> this is. And then we had a good rain last week, which told me what I needed to know about how this gutterless roof will perform in heavy rainfall. Oh, another one of those lanterns up there. Yes, isn't it darling? So I may have to find a place for it over in the back somewhere. Another one. Yes. Um, there is a potential for kind of a gully wash back here. This style of roof does not have gutter because it wraps around and the overhang, boy, there's a, a some mitigation efforts back here to make it kind of like a riverbed which then channels the water back through 
poured into the plant material, which will be planted in the foreground, and then also to this drain over here. And that is all work that we're going to, to address as we begin landscaping this side and making a lot of this much more even and much more tread comfortable. So comfortable. So speaking as to don't fall. I know, right? Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to end kind of on, uh, on this note. Um, here's, <laughs> here's my question of the day because I'm composing a list of flowering shrubs with my friend Carrie, the bug whisperer of blooming shrubs. And probably maybe in the top three of my favorite blooming shrubs is my snowball viper. So be. I want to know what your top three blooming shrubs are, whether they're spring bloomers, Ooh. fall bloomers, summer bloomers, just let me know and we, we can kind of compile a list. We might be able to do like a survey. And have like yeah, we put, can maybe do some ops, kind of like survey. In the community tab, yeah, I think we can. Yeah, and we can talk about that uh, on April 2nd <laughs> on our LV yeah, TV Live. For and don't sure. forget to send Stuart an April, April Fool's Day a birthday wish. So then here is my wrap up. <laughs> Someone commented why when I talk about the garden design, when I talk about the inspiration for it and its, its execution, why do I always say I instead of we? Now I don't know if this if this follower was talking about we in the context of my husband and myself or me and my team or whatever. Well, I would say I, because number one, when it comes to the landscape, my husband is very happy for me to drive the bus. <laughs> he gives not a lot of input, though he does enjoy sitting out front and taking lots of credit for it after he has been executed. Um, but it is basically my design. It's even, even my help with Roger and with Kayla, as wonderful as they are, the initial vision of it, the profile of it, the driving force of it is, is pretty much mine. So when I say I, that's what I'm alluding to instead of we. Now I would definitely say that there's very much a collective we make this all happen. Yeah, absolutely. But in terms of when I say I, my design process, my design process is very much something that's happening in, in my head and that I'm kind of So there you go. There is our Wednesday walkabout and a cottage on the hill update. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will enjoy uh, just seeing how things continue to evolve. Take care.